Welcome back to VT Vibes, the show where inspired youth inspire youth. I'm your host, Shannon Pramal. We want our viewers to know that your involvement is highly encouraged, so please keep the comments and suggestions and feedback coming so we can make future episodes even better. Not only this, but as a youth-led show, we want our viewers to know that opportunities for Fijian youth to be a part of our show and on our team is available. Stay tuned to the end of the show to find out how. With that being said, I would now like to hand it off to Ashna Kumar to talk more about a unique employment opportunity that is available to youth aged 15 to 30 in Canada. Hi everyone, my name is Ashton Kumar and I'm a career coach with Douglas College Training Group and I'm here to share some exciting information about an upcoming paid youth employment program called SEED. Our SEED Youth Employment Program is for individuals who are looking to gain employment, gain tools, gain skills um, for individuals between the ages of 15 and 30. And this is a six week paid online training program uh, with me, yours truly, Ashton Kumar. And once you are completed the six weeks, we do support you in work placement to gain that, again, that long-term employment skills. And so if you know this is the program for you, you have been an individual struggling to find employment, you are hungry to find full-time employment, please reach out to us at seedyouth at douglascollege.ca or feel free to give me a call if you have any questions at 604-218-0768. The program does start May 31st and as mentioned, it is all online so you don't even have to leave your house for the six weeks to attend the training as long as you're able to commit to the program which will run from Monday to Friday 9 to 3. Any more information give me a call send me an email and I'll get back to you right away. We are holding information sessions for anyone else who is interested to gain more information about the program on Tuesdays and Thursdays via Zoom at 10 a.m. So again, if you have any questions, definitely send us an email or give us a call and we'll send you the link to join us on Tuesday and Thursday. And uh, hopefully we could provide you with more information to kickstart your journey. Um, and the main question we get is, what's the catch? There is no catch. Just be hungry for employment and you're looking for, for support, give us a call. We are here for you. Again, thank you so much. I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you, Ashna. Up next, it's my pleasure to introduce to you our special guest for this episode, Nathan Chen. Nathan came into our studio this week and shared his own personal entrepreneurial experiences, as well as some valuable business advice for other young youth wanting to start their own businesses. So please have a look. Hello and welcome back to BT Vibes. I'm your host, Shannon Pramal. This is the show where inspired youth inspire youth. Today in our studio we have a special guest and his name is Nathan Chen. So welcome Nathan to our show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. How are you doing today? Very good. And yourself? I'm doing great, yeah. Very good, very. I'm very excited to talk to you. Um, you're one of the few people that I was really excited to have Thank on the you. show because I think you have so much experience and knowledge to share with our viewers. So I'm really excited to have you here today. Thank you. So I'll let you start off by telling the viewers a little bit more about yourself. Uh, my name is Nathan Chand. I'm 26. I'll be 27 in two weeks. Uh, I work a full-time job, uh, four days a week, 10 hours a day. And I also run this shop on the side. And you're going to hear it here first that we're opening our second location in Port Moody. So that will be coming up very soon. So I'll have a full-time job and then two businesses. That's yeah. awesome. So it'll be something, something different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Nathan here is actually the owner of Bula Lounge. Its a f act first location is actually located in Burnaby, BC, Canada. And now you're opening a second location, second which location, is super exciting. Yeah. So how long have you um, been a business person for? You know what? To be honest with you, since I was young, I, I was into this field. 
Mm -hmm. Like I first started off and I saw my my older cousins, you know, having nice clothes, nice oh, watches yeah. and I was like, you know what, one day I want to be like that, right? Yeah, for sure. But to work a full-time job to get there, it's, it's really tough, you know? Mm -hmm. My goal was to become a police officer. A lot of people don't realize that. And I'm, I'm still in that field, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I potentially will still reach that goal. I just don't know when, but one day I will. But uh, when I was young, I started off I'm selling hats, uh, doing some weird stuff. Like I told my dad, hey, can I borrow $1,000? And he's like, for what? I'm like, uh, I want to order some hats from China and sell them to kids at school. He's like, why? I'm like, well... There's a new sh song that came out from Tyga called Snap Back to Back. <laughs> Probably past your time, but uh, uh, everyone was wearing snapbacks. Yeah. And in Lids, that hat was $40 plus tax. So I'm like, huh, you know what? If I order from China, it's $2 a hat. Yeah. So I ordered it for $2, went to school, sold it for $20. Eventually, as time went on, all around Surrey, Richmond, I had different kids in different schools selling the hats for me. So I would wow. sell it to them for $10. They'd buy a minimum of 10 mm -hmm. and give my 100 bucks and then sell it whatever they want. So I was kind of like a drug dealer for hats <laughs> when you think about it in that way, you know? Yeah, that's that's how I started making money and thinking, whoa. You know, like when I was, what, in grade 11, I was able to go buy a Versace watch. At that time, that was a big thing, you know? Yeah, that's crazy. So as time went on, I just realized that this is what I want to do, you know? I uh -huh. don't want to work for anyone else. It's nice to have a government job, which I do have, mm -hmm. with a benefit, pension. It's a backup plan, but... My goal is to run my own thing, you know? Yeah, multiple streams of income is exactly, very, like, exactly. the thing now. Because you can't really survive out here without thinking, like, oh, what other ways are you going to be able to make money come in, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's really, actually crazy. I didn't know that you, that's how it started yeah, off. Yeah, not many people. I don't really tell people unless yeah. they ask, you know? And then now I'm doing crypto as well. So uh -huh. I have, like, five different streams of, in streams of income. Uh-huh. So it's something, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. So your business, Bula Lounge. Yeah. So it's here in the Lower Mainland, and there's such a d diverse population. There is a Fijian community, obviously, here, but your business attracts a lot of, of the diverse population. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to ask first, um, how did you come up with the idea, like the concept of Bula Lounge? Like, what's the whole story behind that? So I'm very proud to be Fijian. Mm -hmm. You know what? I, I played in the Fiji Soccer League. In the rugby, when the rugby seven comes, I buy 200 tickets a year. I don't buy it to make money. I buy it to make sure all the Fijians come together. We sit in the center, cheer and laugh without anyone taking your seats because, as you know, reserved is, <laughs> yeah. right? But I'm very proud to be Fijian. So the word bula is it's just a word that every Fijian knows, you know? So I want people to be educated about Fiji. So when you go to Fiji and you get off the plane, you hear the word bula, you're like, Hey, I, I've heard that. Yeah. But you already know what it means from our lounge. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was very proud. My, my parents are very proud to be Fijian. So I wanted to open a shop. I knew I wanted to open that shop. Right? The way that it happened, it, it, I'll tell you that after. But yeah. uh, I didn't know what to name it. And I thought about it. We're Fijian. I have all Fijian tattoos. My back, on my back, when I was 15, I got tattooed Fijian without my mom and dad knowing. Oh. <laughs> because I went to Mexico with my parents. Everyone thought I was Mexican. Here um, in Seattle, everyone thought I was black. You know, so I was like, you know, I need you to know yeah. I am Fijian. Mark it <laughs> you know? on you forever. Yeah. <laughs> Stuck now, right? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So that's how the name came about. I'm like, okay. okay, the first first word that comes to mind when you think of Fiji is Bula. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, Bula Lounge. That's very smart, actually. Yeah. yeah, because not only, like, Fijian people, we know that, obviously, right? But even, like, tourists, like, yeah. people that aren't Fijian, that's the first thing, like you said, that's what they hear, that's what they know. That's, like, literally, like, the source of the like, first introduction to the language. Mm -hmm. What are you going to learn? Hello, how are uh, you, right? So, yeah, that's crazy. So how, how um, long ago did you establish this business? So people, people are saying to me, you should be so proud of yourself that you reach your dreams, your goals. This is, you know, you, I was like, uh, this wasn't my dream. Mm -hmm. This wasn't something that I was like, oh, well, I'm going to be a hookah lounge owner. Yeah. You know, my dream was to be successful, mm -hmm. you know, start something for my family, and the future have everyone set. You know, so I have a full-time job. I am making money. I am doing well. But I wanted to do something where, you know, I could just take a risk and see what happens. Mm -hmm. So it was very, it was, it was an interesting concept how it came around. That's crazy. So basically, now that we know a little bit more about your background with the business, of course, I know that a lot of young people are looking at this interview and they want to know more about, like, how are they going to get started in a business? Because I know you have made it so that your business is impactful and profitable. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people want to know. <laughs> well, you know what? First of all, I was very lucky to have good parents. You know, they, awesome. taught, they taught me a lot of things. At mm -hmm. 19 years old, I was able to get a credit card. Mm -hmm. you know? And 
And the main thing in this business mentality is to, to get good credit, have good credit, pay your bills. You know what, when I was young, I didn't, I didn't go buy a car like all my friends did. I, I, I had a little bit of money, but I didn't go buy all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I used my credit card, paid my bills on time, got everything. And then, it, you know what, it, you, to be honest with you, you need to have money to make money. Mm -hmm. Right? And you have to take a risk. I, when I first got this shop, I was actually a customer there. It was a different hookah lounge. I was a oh, customer. Okay. It was called Bliss, yeah. So I was a different, uh, I was a customer. I was doing photography, another side job that I found okay. at another hookah lounge. And the other hookah lounge owner uh, was very rude and disrespectful. Mm -hmm. He never ended up paying me for the work that I did. Oh. So I got mad and I went with my girlfriend and I said, hey, let's go to this uh, other lounge and let's, let's, you know, take the stress out of smoke. Mm -hmm. And the best thing is that I never smoked. Mm -hmm. I never smoked marijuana, I never smoked cigarettes because I was mm -hmm. studying to become police. Mm -hmm. I just happened to say, you know what, I'm stressed, and let's just go. Okay. And it just, it just happened. So I was speaking to the owner and uh, the opportunity came around and I was like, hey, it's Friday night, 10.30 p.m., there's nobody here. Like, how do you make money, man? Like, just sell it to me and, you know, I'm going to make this the greatest place ever. He's like, okay, how much? I'm like, whoa, <laughs> bro, chill. I'm, yeah. I'm just a photographer, man. I, yeah. I can't afford this. He's like, go to the bank. You work a good job, I'm like, yeah. Go to the bank, ask for a business loan. I'm like, okay, but I won't get a business loan for that much money. Yeah. He's like, go to the bank, ask for a business loan, see what they give you. I'm like, well, to be honest with you, I'm not paying you 500000 for this place. As a joke, I'm just still joking. I thought it was like a, like yeah. a fun conversation. I'm like, 100000 I do not have 100000 as yeah. much as people <laughs> want to say. I do not. I didn't have even 5000 at that time. So I was like, he's like, okay, go to the bank, let's see. I'm like, Holy smokes, I go home and wake my mom and dad, but hey, this guy's still here. They're like, go back to sleep, man. <laughs> you know, so then eventually everything, I went to the bank and I got approved for a little bit. But I also had my parents who helped me quite a bit, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's always wonderful. Like, that's why I like, try and stress. Like, no matter whether it's starting your own business, whether you want to pursue, like, a musical career or, like, a different type of career. Like, if you have your parents' support, mm -hmm. that literally goes, like, such a far length. Like, it goes, honestly, you give an inch, go a mile with it, you know? And like a parent support, honestly, goes a long way. What people need to understand, though, is that at this age, I'm 26. Yeah. I really appreciate my parents. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when I was young, I would argue with them. I want to go here. I want to go here. I want to buy this. They didn't, you know. But as you get older, you start to realize without your parents, you're not going to survive. You know, I went through a lot of things in my life, and I dealt with a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Different people were in my life, but my mom and dad have been there from the start. My yeah. mom, dad, my sister, right? Yeah. I made some big mistakes, you know. Mm -hmm. I got in some big trouble, and uh, they came and saved me. Mm -hmm. I went through different, you know, friends, different girls and everything, and I still have those two, you know. So respect your parents. Understand that yeah. they're there to help you. They might get mad at you, but when you screw up, they're the ones who's going to yeah. help you, you know. It's always nice to have their back, yeah. them have your back. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So anyways, I want to ask, so with a young person starting their business, um, basically, what do you think, like, is one of the hardest things for a business owner that a lot of people don't understand because I know a lot of people think it's probably easy oh I'm gonna start my own business this and that but then when you're young it seems easy right but yeah. when you're working at, at it, it it's not as easy as you think it is it could be one of the hardest things I ever done in my life mm -hmm. you know and uh, for, for me I, I, I was very good with promotion before the shop opened I promoted it three months in advance people yeah. are wondering what is this Bula Lounge I, I went on your page and I started liking your pictures, and you must be wondering, what the heck is this? Yeah. And then you clicked on it, Bula Lounge. I'm Fijian, I'm Fijian, I'm going to support it. Absolutely. You know, it, it was just a, it was a mind game. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, in a business, it, it's very tough. The payroll, now I have, what, seven staff members to deal with mm -hmm. the payroll. Uh, you know, like, dealing with the customers is very hard. But to start your own business, in general, it's hard. Mm -hmm. If you do not put 100% in, you will not succeed. Yeah. You know, it, it's not my dream, it's not my passion. But my passion was to be successful. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying very hard to do that, you know. Yeah. So it, it is tough. Yeah. I, I, it depends on what business you want to run. Mm -hmm. Everything uh, has its own yeah, different Yeah, you know, like path. to have a storefront is very tough. Yeah, for sure. So I know you, uh, you mentioned too that you have like a team with you now. Yeah. You started off uh, on your own building this business, but mm -hmm. now you have a large team. Yeah. So obviously it's really important to pick the right people for your team. So how do you know who to choose? Like, what do you look for? In so, life? you know, like, um, when I first started this business, nobody believed in me. Mm -hmm. I said, hey, I'm opening this Bula Lounge. This is the concept. This is what I'm going to do. And everything is going to be crazy, you know? Mm -hmm. But nobody believed in me. So I, I just did it. And, you know, I, I had Sheetal there to help me from the start with all the payroll, all the, all the computer work, everything. 
But you're right, I picked the right team. How did I? I have no idea. You know, it's just the right people. You sense them. You know mm -hmm. what? Without this team today, mm -hmm. I would not be sitting here. I would not be where I am. Yeah. Like Fatan, Will, uh, Ali, Khan, all these guys from the start. I had a team from the start, and throughout the time, it changed. Mm -hmm. But with, if it wasn't for everybody, I wouldn't be here. You know, so you need to pick the right team. You can't do it by yourself. And sometimes your ego comes in. You know, like for me, when I first started, I was calm. I was quiet. Now I, I kind of think I'm 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 a big shot, you know. At one point it hit me that I'm I'm a big shot, I can, you know. But mm -hmm. you can't think like that, mm -hmm. you know. It, no matter what you want to be, you want to be humble. But it will hit you that you no, know, holy smokes, you got the top place or whatever. But yeah. you can't think like that, you know. Like now my mind has changed. I'm like I'm back to the, I'm back to normal. The shop has been closed for COVID. Not a single text has come. Oh. You know, nobody's asking. Hey Nathan, how are you? Where you are? But when the shop's open, hey bro, hey bro, hey, yeah. hey, you're my cousin. Hey, you know. <laughs> Like I, yeah, found, everyone wants to know I you found cousins that I never knew of, yeah. you know, so it's just <laughs> interesting. But without the team, yeah. it's not possible. Honestly, yeah, it goes a long way as well. Um, so basically, um, my next question, um, you mentioned in your intro that you're actually a transit security officer. So you have a full-time job aside mm -hmm. from this business. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask, how do you manage the workload of both of these jobs? It's very tough. I start at 5, 5.30 in the morning. I finish at 2.30 p.m. I go home, I nap or do whatever, if I have to buy cheesecake or fago or whatever, I, I go and do it and I come to shop at six. Four days a week, it's very tough, but like I said, if I didn't have the team, I wouldn't have been doing this, you know. Sheetal helped me so much through everything, you know, and then Fatan and Will, when I had nobody, like, you know, some, some stuff happened and I had nobody there at the shop, Fatan is one of my guys, like, I, and you know him, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's one of my guys. From the start, he's been there. You know, he said, I don't want pay, I'm here to help, you know, like, so I'm helping all these guys. Each staff member has now learned to make crypto and learn Bitcoin, That's you know, so they have their jobs. They come and sit, we relax, we eat, we, you know, we enjoy, we're all, we're not friends, we're family now, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, there's, there's, a, lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of things <laughs> yeah. to it, not enough time to talk about that. Wow, that's crazy. Um, so I know, like, obviously with all that, there's also this mentality that um, to be a business person or an entrepreneur, a lot of kids think that it takes having to go to like post-secondary <laughs> and getting like 10 different degrees, 10 different certifications. I'm not saying education is not needed or necessary. Education's always top-notch. But there's that kind of like stigma that you have to have these certifications in order to start your business. And I just want to ask you, like, do you, what's your experience on that? Do you know? I want no. you to <laughs> let you, the viewers know because I don't want to miss Sometimes I'm not, uh, I'm not too proud of it, but I didn't graduate high school. Mm -hmm. I didn't finish uh, Math 11. I didn't go to, you know, I didn't get that certificate and say, hey, you, you graduated. For the first two years, I got that fake one where you cross the, the, the oh, stage. Yeah. I gave it to my mom and dad. They're like, so where's the real, real one? I'm like, uh, it's coming, it's coming, it's delayed, it's delayed. Mm -hmm. But I didn't finish high school. Mm -hmm. No matter what everyone say, I, I, I Google, I read, you know, articles. I, people are looking at Instagram, what Kim Kardashian's doing. I'm looking at how to make money. Mm -hmm. You know, it, I, I don't believe that... Uh, School is everything, but it is very important, you know. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have that full-time job, I would have had to go study, Yeah. you know. And as much as you want to say, everything in life is connections. Honestly. Who you know, what you know. Yeah. What you know doesn't matter versus who you know. You know, you can be an all-A student, have a degree, but if you can't uh, get a job and you don't mm -hmm. have somebody to help you, what's the point? Mm -hmm. You know, but study. Don't, don't get me wrong. Yeah. You know, study hard because it's going to help you one day. You know, yeah. it's a different time. In my time when I was coming, coming up, uh, we didn't really need school that much now it, everything is school yeah it's school is super important but i think the thing is like for those people that like because school's not for everybody yeah. on honestly because even as me as a student right now it's really hard to try and figure out what you're going to do in five years time once you get that degree what jobs are going to be available and all that but it's like if you want to start your own business you don't necessarily need that kind of certification mm -hmm. you can do your own research. You could teach yourself, and you can get, uh, connect with other people because, it's, like you said, it's who you know as well, who you get the knowledge from, right? Mm -hmm. But so, like I said to you earlier, is that hookah wasn't my passion. Exactly. Remember, yeah. so I learned everything. Mm -hmm. I went on YouTube and Google and Facebook, and I just learned what TikTok is like last month, you know, and, <laughs> and uh, I learned how to make that hookah. I learned yeah. to make it the best. People are wondering that hookah that I have, where is it from? I'm like, I did research. You know, <laughs> it's not like. I went to school to learn this. Yeah. It's something I needed money. I wanted money, so I, I studied. Exactly, you yeah. Know? You got to look for yeah, it to be able to exactly. find it. Yeah, for sure. 
So we're just ending near, we're just about to run out of time for our interview. So I want to leave the floor open to you. Do you have any advice, any message that you want to leave with the viewers here today? Mm -hmm. So you know what? Everybody wants to start a business. Everyone sees Nathan, oh, Bula Lounge, you know, he's, he's doing so good. Nobody realizes how hard it was. Mm -hmm. From the start, we were there 24 hours, literally, not even 20, 48 hours we slept at the shop to make the floor, to get everything. Because we announced an opening day, mm -hmm. February 28th. We had nothing. Mm -hmm. February 28th, we received the hookahs. We received everything. Oh, wow. We're like, holy smokes. And when we opened the door, there was a lineup. We're like, oh, my gosh. So it's not easy, but as long as you find the right team, you respect your parents, you know, they'll believe in you. Mm -hmm. you, you I went to my parents. I wrote a plan, 30-page plan. This is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to make money. This is how I'm going to do this. If you believe in me, we're going we're gonna to take it. So now, one year later, they haven't said they're proud yet, but I feel like they are because I, I'm in the Fiji Sun now uh, article in Fiji, mm -hmm. uh, Fiji Times is writing an article, yeah. Burnaby Now wrote an article, like, you know, it's, it's getting big. People from New Zealand, Australia are calling our phone asking us, hey, like, where are you located? You know, yeah. like, it's becoming big. Yeah. It's coming there, you know, but I want everyone to realize that you need a team and it's not going to be hard. Respect your parents is number one. And you know what? When you get to the top, don't forget the people that were at the bottom. Absolutely. Don't forget where you started because that's something that happened to me. I, I, I got disrespected. I used to be a bouncer. I got disrespected. To this day, I will never forget those people that have disrespected me. If you come to my shop, I will dis disrespect you right back because I will never forget that. Mm -hmm. So don't disrespect others because people don't forget. Mm -hmm. You know, when you get to the top or while you're getting to the top, don't forget the people that helped you. Mm -hmm. You know what? Uh, your relationships, your friendships, no, don't ne ne neglect them. You know, Absolutely. like uh, as much as you want to uh, be great and do your business, there's some people that were there for you, you should give them that love and support mm -hmm. as well, you know. So that's, that's pretty much it. Wow, that's some really great advice that you gave us, especially the young viewers, seeing yeah. that you're a successful, I'd say a success, <laughs> successful I'm all right. business you know, person. I'm all right. I'm yeah, well, you started yourself and to put Fiji, uh, Fijians on the map now, so because people are now knowing, like, oh, what's Bula Lounge? Like you yeah. said, everyone's curious about it. They want to know what it is. And I, we were talking earlier that now, like, there's an older demographic trying to figure out, like, oh, what is this place yeah. and everything, right? So yeah, thank you so much for coming on to our show. I hope that the viewers were able to get some knowledge, insight, because this was very helpful. And like I learned a lot, too, for, about you <laughs> and your you. business as well. So I hope this really helped the viewers as well. Thank you so no much for problem. coming. No problem. And if uh, anyone has any questions or anything, Bula Lounge, you can DM me or email me. You know, I can help. Yeah, so do you want to yeah. shout out your socials? Yeah, yeah. For Instagram, our uh, Instagram is Bula Hookah Lounge. Uh, if you want to go to my personal, you can do my personal. It's crypto.nate, K-R-Y-P-T-O dot N-A-T-E-E. -E. All, All right. right. So if you got any questions or anything, let me know. Hopefully one day I can sit there and interview you <laughs> because I heard a lot about you doing some big things. So. Oh, thank you. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much yeah, for coming. You. You're always welcome here. And thank, thank you. you for tuning in to VT Vibes. We'll be right back after this. Hi everyone, welcome to Mental Mindset. I'm Tasha Chand, a neuropsychology student and mental health advocate here to talk to you today about anxiety and to discuss normal anxiety versus anxiety disorders. Now first, what is anxiety? Well, essentially, anxiety is the feeling of worry or fear. The amlagata and hippocampus are the two main parts in the brain that play a role in anxiety. Now, everyone has or will experience anxiety at some point in their life. It's normal to go through anxiety in a stressful, traumatic, or important situation. Taking exams is actually one of the most common times an individual experiences anxiety. And as much as anxiety stems from our mind, it very much can have physical effects such as stomach aches, headaches, and an increase in heart rate. In some cases, people also experience an anxiety attack. Now, an anxiety attack happens when that individual is very overwhelmed by the situation, by what's going on, and their emotions and thoughts and feelings. 
So their anxiety levels start to increase. It gets harder and harder to breathe and to control your emotions and your thoughts. It feels like the room is closing in on you. And in that very moment, it feels like my body is shutting down, game over. So what's happening is you're freaking out from freaking out, essentially. And it's this cycle that's going to continue to happen until you recognize your triggers and how to control them. On the other hand, there's anxiety disorders. Now, this is when that anxious feeling, it doesn't go away after a little bit. And generalized anxiety disorder being one of them is classified as constant and a persistent anxiety over everyday routines. Now, some coping mechanisms for more mild cases of anxiety include journaling. Journaling is a great way to lay down your thoughts, your feelings, but also your triggers to identify your triggers. Thank you, Nathan, for joining me this week. That wraps up our show for today, but I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did bringing it to you. Remember that this is your show, too, so please feel free to let us know of any feedback, comments, and suggestions you may have. Not only that, but if you or anyone you know would like to be on our show, then please give us a call at 778-709-2853 or email vtvibestv at gmail.com. If you have any events or information that targets or invites Fijian youth, then please feel free to let us know about that as well. We'd be more than happy to share it with our audience. For sponsorship inquiries, you could also call or email us. Remember that you can catch our show every Thursday at 10 p.m. and the reruns on Sundays at 4.30 p.m., which is right after our other show, Fiji in Focus. Be sure to like and follow our Instagram and Facebook page, which is at Viti Vibes TV. I look forward to having you all tune in next week. Until then, stay safe and stay healthy. I'm your host, Shannon Vermal, signing off. Vinaka. Yeah. All out of state, come and then they never seen that. Fake, fake, don't respect your fingers, then you lean back. All out of state, come and then they never seen that. Fake, fake, don't respect your fingers.